so I'm out today hiking around on some private property that I've gotten permission to come out on. I'm really fortunate to have that happen. That doesn't happen all the time. Um, it's a fantastic piece of property, a really nice um, mix of hardwoods, um, all kinds of resources back here. Um, and what I wanted to do today is I wanted to get out with my gear that I put together um, specifically for bug out uh, situations. And weather is starting to turn warm, so I've been switching things out, um, loading stuff up. Got some bark. I think this is off a of shag bark hickory. It's gonna be my base because the ground is so wet. And then what I wanted to do today is do a little flint and steel. Probably not what most people think about doing um, in a bug out scenario, um, but it is a skill. It is a way of starting a fire. It is certainly a method that is worth practicing and I am by no means an expert at it. But it certainly is fun and um, important to try these skills um, always good to have redundancies and backups within your fire making abilities. You know, I carry matches, lighters, flint and steel, ferro rods, tinder tabs of different types, um, because they all have an important role. And if one fails, um, which sometimes it does, especially when it's wet and cold, uh, it's always good to have multiple. So I'm going to fluff up this jute. It's not a particularly big nest of jute. Okay, got my flint, got my striker. Just want to do some practices. Okay, nice. Getting some nice sparks off of that. Shouldn't be an issue. I'm going to use a small piece of char cloth that's already been made. I keep this in my tin. I keep pre-made char cloth, and then I also keep material to make more char cloth in my tin. That way, I have stuff ready to go and stuff ready to make for future fire. So that's important too. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, there we go. Okay, transfer that in to my bundle.
really time for some food. I'm going to my radio. Don't need that. It's still a little bit chilly. So for food options, um, you know, you want things that are simple, um, easy to prepare. Uh, don't take a lot of um, cooking. MREs, traditional military MREs, are fantastic because, of course, they have the heater packs. You don't have to start a fire. You don't have to boil water. The, everything's contained within the heater pack. Um, they are heavy, and then you have a lot of waste, a lot of packaging, usually. So I'm trying out um, a new um, meal. This is from Nutrient Survival. Um, it's a company that I haven't, I really didn't know much about, um, and then I started doing some research and I really liked the idea behind what they're doing. These are freeze-dried meals, um, but one of these packs, what they call their NRE, Nutrition Ready to Eat, um, is a, a day's worth of food. Um, it's uh, 40 essential nutrients, so it has a lot of nutrients in it, 15 year shelf life, one day worth of meals. Um, no artificial colors, flavors, or preser preservatives, ready in minutes. Um, made with premium ingredients, and it's made in the USA. So uh, this is their NRE, and I thought that would be a perfect time to test this out and see if I like it and see if it's going to be worth um, putting in my, my kit. So you have this pouch, a Mylar pouch, or a foil-type pouch. It all comes in, so we're gonna save that because that's kind of actually a handy thing. Um, we have triple mac and cheese, like that. We have hearty apple cinnamon oatmeal, creamy vanilla shake, hearty lasagna. There is a peanut butter bar meal And then I have vanilla coffee, classic roast, and then liquid nutrient, lemon lime. So that's all in that kit. And what I'm gonna do is I wanna do, close enough to lunch, right? I'm gonna do triple mac and cheese. Now, you guys are going to laugh at me. This is your time to laugh. Go ahead. I'm going to put on my reader glasses because I am blind and an old lady. Um, I always keep them in my, my chest pack in case I got to read small stuff. Directions. Pour triple cheese mac into a bowl. Add three quarters of a cup of boiling water. Stir, cover, and let stand eight to ten minutes. Stir again and dig in. Okay, so this is very similar to... Um, very similar to a mountain house freeze-dried meal. Only thing being is the, the mountain house um, is in its own container. They want you to do it in your own bowl. Um, now for a couple different reasons, I don't like uh, cooking food directly in my bowl or in my pot because that dirties it up and then um, I have to clean it, and I don't like doing that. That is no fun. So. I've got an idea. I love when ideas come together. Like that. What do you think about that? I think that'll work.
All right, one thing that I planned ahead on um, was cooking this nutrient survival meal. I did my research. And what I decided to do is, instead of a bowl, um, I brought one of these. These are um, basically kind of like your make your own meal pouch. Comes with a decadent pack in it, desiccant pack. Um, but these, will hold the contents of my meal. And then I can pour my water into this and seal it and let it set. <clears throat> With a bowl, I can't do that. Um, I really don't have a bowl that has a lid. Um, and the bowls don't tend to do that well with um, insulating the food. So this is going to hold the water, hold the mac and cheese, and then that should be good. Yeah. And then the coffee, I've got um, an insulated mug. Um, what's great about this mug, this is a GSI. Um, it has a measuring cup built in. So, you know, I got to do that third of a cup of water for the mac and cheese. I can measure it that way and then should be good to go need my spork 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 i want to save this now i could have eaten out of this pouch i could cut the top off and eat out of the pouch that would work too but i've still got these other things that I'm not going to eat right away. So I will just put them back in and seal that. And then I can use this to, I can use this to collect water. Um, I can use this to uh, put food in and eat out of. There's a lot of different um, things to do with that. You always want to repurpose things as much as possible. <clears throat> Not boiling yet. I'm not gonna pour it all in and put in some of it so it's not too soupy. Seal that. Want that set. <clears throat> now, super important item coffee. I need coffee. The, the cool thing about this nutrient survival stuff, this food. Um, is that it is a very nutrient-dense uh, um, food source compared to some of the other ones that are, you know, primarily um, salt and preservatives and all that kind of crap. Um, You can do your research. I mean, obviously go and look at the the nutrient breakdowns and then compare that to a mountain house or something else. Um, and it just has tons of vitamins. Um, and uh, it's lower in sodium than a lot of the other ones.
All right, moment of truth. That's got a good, um, strong coffee taste. It's not um, just sugar. A lot of those um, packaged coffees, pre-made coffees are just, you know, they're full of sugar and they're just sweetener and then a little bit of coffee. This has a very strong coffee taste, which I really like. Well, that's setting. I wonder, do I have it in here? Oh, yes. <laughs> I do, I do, I do. What excursion in the woods would it be if I didn't have spam, right? So, I don't have my grill with me. I didn't bring a grill, but I do have a cup. We can add that to the mac and cheese. Just cut this up into little chunks. There's not, I don't think there's any um, meat options in <clears throat> these um, NREs that Nutrient Survival has. I may be mistaken, but I don't think there are. Uh, which is fine. I don't, that doesn't bother me because um, I can always add tuna packs, chicken, spam, um, pulled pork. There's different pack, you know, foil packs of um, meat that I can add. Coffee's still nice and hot in this insulated cup. This GSI mug does a pretty good job. <clears throat> so all this stuff that I'm using um, I will have links down below in my Amazon store. I always put them in there. So if you guys are interested in learning more about them or you want to purchase them, whatever, you can do it that way. Um, another cool thing that I got from Nutrient Survival is I got these uh, little chocolate chip cookies. Uh, they're kind of like an energy bar, you know. Um, but it was just like a whole bag of these things. And they have a shel nice shelf life on them. Um, but you can, you know, take a handful of these, put them in your kit, carry them in your pocket, and then you've got a nice, uh, snack that is going to, mmm, pretty good. 
the texture is very similar to a Cliff Bar. It's chocolate chip, but I gotta, I swear there's a hint of honey in this. All right, so I know there's going to be like tons of questions uh, for um, gear and equipment, and I'm going to try to put captions down with everything, but just kind of a brief rundown. The backpack I'm using is the Air Force Multi-Mission Pack. Um, those can be found on eBay and in Military Surplus. Of course, that's the one that I dyed green. Um, showed that on a video last week. Um, running um, a two-quart military canteen and a Nalgene one-quart canteen. Uh, my sleep system, shelter system, uh, the Helicon Tex uh, 9x9 bushcraft tarp, woodland camo. On the ground, I have the um, casualty blanket or grabber space blanket um, to sleep on top of. AquaQuest um, bivy sack with a climate pad, that's the static V pad. And then the sleeping bag is the military green lightweight sleeping bag that comes in the, in the sleep system. Um, other equipment I'm using, I'm using the Beavercraft uh, knife, bushcraft knife they just came out with. Um, that was my primary blade. Fantastic knife, worked very well. Um, food was provided by Nutrient Survival, so check those guys out. This is the NRE. This is the Bravo meal, came with mac and cheese. It's pretty darn good. Um, the pot that I'm using is by Boundless Voyage. It's a titanium pot, and I've done, I did a review on this a long time ago, but um, I have not had it out in a while, and I thought I'd try it out again because... It's a fantastic piece of kit. Is actually a canteen cup. So a military or Nalgene canteen will fit in there perfectly. Not a problem. Comes with a lid, but it comes with a bale. And it has a nesting stand. And so what I was able to do is I put that, um, that stand actually down in the fire and then put my pot on top of that and that gave it some air underneath and I was able to put twigs and stuff underneath it. So, and it comes with a stuff sack. So really just a nice lightweight cook pot. Um, love that. Uh, the radio I'm using, this is a Baofeng. Uh, it's their GMRS radio. Um, I'll put a caption down below. Uh, oh wait, this is the 9R. And um, so what I like about this particular radio is it's GMRS. Um, it has also, it monitors uh, NOAA weather stations. So if there was an alert and I turn this on, it'll immediately go to that station and start broadcasting what the NOAA weather alert is, which is fantastic. And then also you can monitor can't broadcast, but you can monitor ham bands, um, which is great. And it has, uh, it comes with the extending folding antenna, um, which really helps with range. Um, much better than just your standard whip or um, rubber ducky kind of um, antenna. So got that. And then the chest pack. Let's talk about the chest pack real quick. Uh, this is not specifically a big review of it, but this is from 511. This is new. They just came out with these. Um, they didn't send it to me. I bought this on my own because I wanted to test it out. This is the Skyweight Utility Chest Pack. They also have um, another chest pack in the Skyweight line that is called the Survival. Uh, chest pack and that has molly on the front i chose this one um, specifically because i liked this um, stretchy expandable pocket in the front because i can it still fit my phone It'll fit, i have an iphone 14 and what's also nice about this um, particular chest pack is you've got a front pocket here so i've got snacks in there um, it's got webbing loops on the bottom so i was able to put my tourniquet pouch underneath there right main pocket um 
accordions out, but doesn't come all the way open. And there, and there are lots of pockets um, in here. So I really, I really treat my chest pack as my survival kit. Um, it is my possibles kit. I don't have to have a separate kit within my backpack. This is it. And this goes with me everywhere I'm going when I'm in camp, when I'm hiking, and when I'm exploring. This is on me. So I've got my compass, I've got a lighter, a headlamp, multi-tool, ferro rod, duct tape, um, military issue wire saw. Um, I have some live fire which is a fire starter, reusable fire starter. Of course, I've got um, my Streamlight flashlight, flagging tape, um, Blistex, a, a glow stick, pens, Sharpie, write and read notebook, map of the area, my reading glasses, and then my fantastic little light that I got from Five Call Survival Supply. A little glow light for map reading at night and not killing your night vision. So all that fits in this main compartment. And this has multiple loops and pockets, as you can see. And then what is fantastic about these chest packs um, is the ability to carry a handgun for protection. So this has a, a tab that actually allows you to pull it open. And then I'm carrying my Canik um, subcompact 9mm. Fits in here perfectly. There are also loops so you can put extra mags or whatever. And then it is ambidextrous, so you, if you're a righty or a lefty, you can pull these t put these tabs up and then there you can draw from the left or you can draw from the right, it doesn't matter. So far, I like the pack. Um, so far, I like the pack. Um, I think the pack is good itself. You can actually take the harness completely off and um, you can run this as a belt pack. Pack You can run this through your belt or put on the hip belt of your pack. Um, but the thing I don't like about this pack is, is the harness system. Um, 511 does this to me every time. Every time I buy one of their waste packs or something from them, they don't give you enough strap for a bigger guy. Um, you know, this thing is maxed out around my chest. And I'm not even that big of a dude. I mean, yeah, it could be a little bit better. Okay, go easy on me. But hear me out. Uh, there are guys who are a lot beefier than me who are in good shape um, and they have mass and muscle and they wouldn't be able to wear this because their chest would be way too broad. So I don't know why 511 does that. Does that. I mean, I'm not a 13-year-old airsofter. Um, <clears throat> I'm a grown man. I need to have a little bit more extra. So I got this thing maxed out right now. I don't know if I can, if I can fix that or something I can do about it, but it is what it is because I like the pack itself. Chest pack's fantastic. It's really well laid out, um, and uh, the price is pretty decent. It's in the sixty dollars range, I think. So I like it. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. We have tested all my gear um, in my bug out bag. Only thing that I didn't really get into was uh, water purification and first aid. Those are given items. You're going to have to have that. You know, your rundown of your bag is going to be your shelter system, your food, uh, tools, um, water, water filtration, uh, and first aid. Super important. And then your your chest rig or your survival kit of course is super important with signaling and fire making and all that kind of stuff so you know we know all know the basics um, we all know what you need to carry um, but you need to get out and you need to train and you need to try it and it, it is it is such a valuable lesson every time i do this i learn something i figure something out i try something different 
Um, I try a different piece of gear and I see if it works or it doesn't work. And that's why you will see in my videos that things are always evolving. I'm not always just using the same stuff. I'm always changing things up, trying different things, seeing what is the best. And um, it's amazing what just spending a day in the woods with your gear and using it can teach you. So get out, train, use your gear, and definitely stick around and watch more videos Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And we'll see you next time on The Prepared Wanderer.